The Hoosiers have reached out to a new name in the transfer portal as they try to bounce back there. Some updates on the high school recruiting trail. One new prospect offered, another top 30 prospect set to visit Bloomington. And the IU football team might be adding a, a player that previously transferred away. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Hoosiers, your one and only daily one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. I want to thank you guys for making us your first listen, your first watch every single day. I want to get to 1,000 subscribers this week. We are 14 away as I record this. We can do that. We can do that in a day. We can certainly do that in a week. If you guys are listening and haven't already, subscribe to the uh, podcast on YouTube. Let's get to 1,000 subscribers this week. This episode today brought to you by FanDuel, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Lots to catch you up on from kind of busy weekend for the Hoosiers. We're going to start at the top with the thing everybody wants to hear about this time of year, transfer rumors. The Hoosiers have reached out to a new name. They have to. There isn't anybody left that they've previously recruited. Trey White, a transfer from USC. IU has reached out per Deshaun London of 247 Sports. Also, Jeff Rabjohns uh, said that the Hoosiers reached out as well. What is I have to put out there first, I know everybody is hungry for transfer rumors, especially after the meat was picked dry, the bone was picked dry with all the commitments last week. IU has a lot of players they're going to have to reach out to. Everything that I've read and just kind of heard, this is very preliminary. This is he entered the portal and IU reached out just to get a – kind of an idea of if they have any chance at landing him, basically. Now, that being said, let's learn a little bit about him. He was uh, the number 35 ranked player in the 2022 recruiting class. He goes to USC, plays one season there, uh, averages nine points, started 29 games, played in 33 of them, 5.1 rebounds, just an assist per game. Shot 47.4% from the field, but only 26.5% from the three-point line. Is not a good three-point shooter. Uh, Has size to be a good defender. Listed at 6'7", 210 pounds. He's a wing, certainly, and that would help the Hoosiers. That is certainly where they need bodies right now. That would be big in that regard. If we look at Evan Mia, the advanced stat site we continue to use, he's listed his position at 3.7. So he played some small forward, some power forward, maybe a little shooting guard mixed in there, but uh, certainly someone that can stretch the floor. He's not going to be able to knock down shots, at least based on his track record. Now, guys always improve. We saw Trey Galloway go from an awful three point shooter to a respectable one last season. He's got to up the attempts, but that is like this, the staff does have history of helping guys become better three point shooters. But based on what he did at USC, he is not a good three point shooter. His usage rate of 17% is pretty low. That's in line with Jordan Geronimo and race Thompson even Tamar Bates, when he was uh, in, only had a 16.7% usage rate. Uh, 18.7 is where Trey White's is at. So actually, it's uh, probably closer to like Race Thompson, but that's someone that's not going to have the ball a lot, can make plays outside of that. Good slasher, good cutter, can use that body to get to the rim, which I think helps. There is value there. A lot of schools have reached out to him. He's going to be a popular player on the transfer portal. Uh, someone that last season, looking at Evan Mia stats, uh, was 
good offensively. One of the better players for USC. Not good defensively. And one of the wor worst defensive players. Now, that's not uncommon for a freshman to not be as good defensively. His defensive impact was... Um, I mean, it's right around Trey Galloway. Trey Galloway was a good defender. I, I don't really trust these Evan Mia's kind of defensive numbers all that much because uh, I've just had disagreements with him. It has Trey Galloway as like the second worst defender on the team. Uh, that wasn't true. He was a good defender last season. Uh, but the projection for Trey White is to be better offensively, maybe not quite as good defensively, but he's certainly someone that can come in and make an impact offensively. And right now, the Hoosiers need wings. They need players that can play on the perimeter. 6'7 is great size. A physical player will fit in well in the Big Ten. There are reasons this makes sense. We'll see. I, I, I have to reiterate, this is very early in the process, but IU has a lot of work to do. There's guys they're going to have to reach out to. We mentioned in Friday's show, you guys didn't see it on YouTube. I honestly, I scheduled it wrong. It didn't go up until the afternoon on YouTube Friday show, but I mentioned there Cormac Ryan went to UNC. There basically was no recruitment there. I, you lost out, I guess, but like everybody lost out. He just kind of immediately went to UNC. Dalton connect goes to Tennessee. Tennessee are going to be our arch rivals next year. Probably won't even play them, but man, I, was losing everybody to Tennessee right now. Ledlam Dalton connect both to Tennessee We'll find out. I guess we'll find out how good IU could have been because Tennessee's going to have all the players we wanted. Um, that one, that one stung a little bit, but it wasn't surprising. IU was trying to get a, a a visit scheduled for Connect to come on campus. It didn't happen. So fair enough. Uh, the Hoosiers have to kind of reset because earnestly there aren't guys left that they've really recruited. They're gonna we we mentioned that the other day, and since then, two other names have entered the portal or have exited the portal, I should say, have committed elsewhere. So it's gonna be a hard reset on that front. I would expect there to be more rumors this week, but uh again, patience and just because I use reached out to someone does not mean they're that heavily involved. So we'll 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 see more on white if the interest becomes more serious, but there will be other names that mentioned this week. IU started recruiting as with the rest of the country on the high school trail. Offered a, a new guard who would solve some issues for the Hoosiers. We'll talk about that and the top recruit that is going to be on campus this summer. Before we do that, Grand Slams, no hitters, double plays are back. There's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, sign up, place that first bet, get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you do not win. Also, NBA playoffs are going on, if you guys are watching that. No better way to enjoy the playoffs than to throw some money down on it as well, whether it's spreads, game lines, player props. It, they have it all covered for you. Don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet, up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Big thanks to you guys for making us your first listener, your first watch every day. Make sure you check out Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Special. It is here and bigger than ever. Follow along all 32 teams' first picks in a six-episode Ultimate Mock Draft experience. Only Locked On can deliver. All three episodes are available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. So the Hoosiers offered a guard in the 2024 class, Austin Swartz, this weekend. The high school trail, recruiting trail, opened up once again this weekend, and the Hoosiers jumped on it. They were all over the country. But Swartz was catching some eyes this weekend on the Nike EYBL circuit. 
He's a three-star, 6'4 shooting guard in the 2024 class, ranked number 131, sharpshooter to say the least. Sounds like he's someone that's going to move up. The the 20 like this summer is when the class like 2024 a lot of things shake up. So you can have rankings and outside of I would say the top however many 25 maybe 50 there's a lot of shakeup and even within that this is the summer kind of that that class would shake up quite a bit so sounds like Schwartz is going to move up in the class anyway but current or through three games he was the second leading scorer on the Nike EYBL circuit he was shooting 50 percent from three 12 of 24 I know it's AAU, and I know that there's a lot of asterisks you can put with that, but that's very competitive basketball that he is shooting lights out in front of a lot of play, a lot of people, a lot of coaches. Scouting report on him, uh, he's an outstanding shooter. That's what jumps out the most. Uh, he makes threes off the catch and off the dribble, moves very well to find openings. He can make threes coming around screens. On Saturday night, he had multiple threes behind the arc. I would assume that means maybe the NBA arc or the college arc. I'm not sure. That's from Jeff Rabjohns over at Peaks. Uh, he also mentioned he had like he's a very well built out six four. He's he has a big frame, and I think that would help a lot in being able to get your shot off, especially in the Big Ten where they play rugby as often as they play basketball. So. A, a very obvious fit for the Hoosiers. They need shooting. I mean, that's what they've kind of been looking for in the transfer portal. Uh, it makes sense that this is what they would be after. And so it makes sense that they're offering him. Uh, Swartz didn't have a ton of offers from major schools, but that will probably change as he continues bombing away from three. So IU got in early. Something that they didn't do much in the 2023 class, so we'll see if that pays off here. Speaking of getting in early, Jaden Mustaf uh, is scheduled a visit to IU. Uh, the Hoosiers have been recruiting him for quite some time, dating back to last summer. Uh, he is ranked number 28 in the 2024 class. Uh, one of the better guards in the country in this class, this upcoming class. So. The Hoosiers will have him on campus in June. It's big. Uh, I know that everybody's probably a little bit of doom and gloom on Indiana and whatnot right now, but they're still <laughs> recruiting on the high school trail is still something that the, the Hoosiers are prioritizing as well. Like th these things are cyclical, basically. We were really high on IU recruiting last year. There's a bit of a downturn. The the they didn't end it well with the 2023 class. The transfer portal hasn't been great, but they're they're flying high. It seems coming into the high school class. Uh, Mustaf is listed 6'4", 205 pounds, a combo guard. We did a more extensive episode on him, and I believe we had our college basketball recruiting expert on at the time. So if you guys want to go back and find that. You can look up Jaden Mustaf on uh, our feed on our YouTube channel would be probably a lot easier. You can get a little bit more of a deep dive on him, but he currently has a top five of IU, Florida State, Miami, NC State, Virginia Tech. That was that was alphabetical order. Don't read into that. Uh, he said he's still open to listening to schools. It sounds like Maryland has been involved a little bit, but those are his top five right now. Again. IU kind of failed to make the uh, kind of foundational connections with prospects in the 2023 class, which was understandable because that was like Archie transitioning out, Mike Woodson transitioning in. There was going to be some point where that was going to hurt. Seemed like they pretty quickly pivoted to the 2024 class to make those kind of connections. This will be the summer to see how much they kind of start to pay off. Uh, Mustaf was one of those guys that they got in contact with and they've been laying that groundwork for quite a while. So we'll see if they can get him on campus and, and impress and hopefully land a, another big recruit. This is those moments when turning Jalen Hood Shafino into a lottery pick 
are going to matter as well. This is right around where Jalen Hood Shafino was ranked in his recruiting class. So that'll be brought up, I'm sure, but that's where moments like that matter. So it'll be a big summer for the Hoosiers. We got to get through the transfer portal first. Let's talk about, I mean, on the note of transfer portal, there is a football transfer portal. There might be a player returning to IU that left IU a couple of years ago. It's a weird story. We'll talk about it here in a moment. So many years ago, the Hoosiers landed a pretty big commitment out of the Indianapolis area, out of Avon. A four-star recruit, previously decommitted from Ohio State, commits to the Hoosiers, Samson James. He comes to IU. He plays decently enough. He had a big game against Purdue that I think most people remember uh, as his kind of standout game, that double overtime game the Hoosiers won uh, to finish 8-4 and four that season. They won it on the Peyton Ramsey sneak. Uh, Samson James was the, the big running back in that one. The next season doesn't play a ton and then finds himself on the lower on the, the depth chart in fall practice. I think he was like third string. And in August of 2021, he left. He entered the transfer portal. He commits to Purdue. Long story short, it looks like he might be coming back to IU. <laughs> he There was a post on his Instagram on Sunday evening saying that he was committed with a picture of him an IU graphic. It honestly might be the graphic he used last time he committed to IU, but it, it's there now. It's actually his account. IUP like Trace Jackson Davis still follows him. Uh, IU guys still follow him. I think Wap Fillier still did or Ty Freifogel. There was a couple of ex players for IU. Like it's him. That's the only post on his account, but he also has changed his profile picture to, uh, him in an IU jersey. It's a weird story because he committed to Purdue, but he couldn't get a, a waiver to immediately play. So he did not play anywhere in 2021. He took part in the spring game at Purdue and then re entered the portal in July of 2022. And as best as I can find, he did not play football anywhere last season. There aren't any stats or is any story of him committing anywhere. I don't know if he went to like a JUCO or a community college or something for a season. I'm not sure, which makes this story kind of weird. I'm putting an asterisk on it right now. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of the whole story. I'm sure IU has interest. I mean, he wasn't bad when he came here. He had moments. Um, the thing is, he's not going to be any more than third string probably right now unless he just is a man on fire in fall camp because Jalen Lucas and Josh Henderson are the one-two duo for the Hoosiers heading into the season, and he's going to have to beat guys out. So I'm not really sure what to make of this situation. We'll see if it's actually real, if it actually plays out. He posted it Sunday evening. I'm recording this late Sunday night. The post is still there. I checked right before I went live. Like it, it's not something where he put it up and then made a mistake and he immediately took it down. It's been up for a couple hours. So I, you might get him back this summer. I'm not entirely certain, but we will see S some bummer news over the weekend. If you guys did not see it, uh, Victor Oladipo, another major injury to him suffered. Um, the Heat were playing on Saturday against the Bucks. It was the final uh, couple of minutes of the game. He was in just seeing things out, and he drives to the rim. It wasn't a gruesome play. It wasn't a bad play. He just kind of jumps, and it's ugly. Um they, I mean, immediately the look on Victor's face was that something was very seriously wrong. Uh, it turned out 
it was announced on Sunday that he has a torn patellar tendon in his left knee. That's a that's a serious one. That's a bad one. Um, I I don't want to speculate that this is it. What I would say is that when he went down, Oladipo, you could hear and see him immediately mouthing, that's it, it's over. I don't know how much more his body can physically take in terms of these major injuries. It was his right knee that he um, uh, originally suffered the ruptured quad tendon when he was with the Pacers. I believe it was his right knee that he initially had issues with leading up to that. It just seems like physically his body can't keep up anymore. Um, it was it was tough to watch on Saturday. Had the game on with some friends that went to IU, and we all were uh, – I mean, it, it was – like I said, it was tough to watch. It wasn't gruesome, but he refused to leave on a stretcher, but he very slowly kind of hobbled off while being helped by a couple people. So I'm never going to be one to count Vic out. But in that moment, that was brutal. That was really brutal to watch. So uh, out for him, send some thoughts and prayers his way, things like that. And uh, I hope he's back. But physically, he was not exactly where he had been before in his career. And to suffer a major injury like this, that's an absolute gut punch. Uh, so we'll see if he'll be able to make it back. But it's going to be a long road of recovery for him again. Just that alone is going to be tough. So an absolutely brutal blow for him on that front. Eric Gordon is playing in the playoffs as well. I was going to do a, at least a segment about the playoffs. There wasn't really anybody playing. Eric Gordon is playing in the playoffs for the Clippers, but they are down 3-1 in the series. Oladipo is playing. Zeller is playing in Miami as well. He's playing spot minutes and not always playing. So if you want to turn on the heat, you might see him. He played a little bit on Saturday. And then Thomas Bryant's in Denver, but he was doing well with the Lakers at the beginning of the season. And then he got traded. He asked for a trade uh, during the season, got sent to Denver where he's playing behind Nikola, Nikola Jokic. But something's happened there where he just absolutely cannot get on the court. He's behind players that he should not be behind. So I'm not sure what happened there. He's just flat out not playing. So... There isn't a whole lot to talk about in the playoffs when it comes to Hoosiers. Eric Gordon's played well for the Clippers, but they're seriously undermanned. And that one's probably going to be over here soon. So if you want to turn on the heat and root for Cody Zeller, which Miami and Cody Zeller is not the pairing I ever would make, um, just the city. But if you want to root for Cody and, and for Vic, uh, you can Miami still is alive and kicking in the in the playoffs, so you can tune into that. Thanks for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. Every day as we'll be here throughout the week to get you uh, the latest on transfer rumors. They're going to keep coming in this week. I'm certain of that. So we'll continue to have that for you. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast. Let's get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. You guys can do it. I know you can. Leave a quick rating and a review. If you're on Spotify, Apple, uh, that helps us out immensely as well. So as always, guys, I hope you have a tremendous start to your week. Most importantly, LEO.